What's up everybody, Cole, Cole Miner Customs here. Today we're gonna to be going over how to apply hat patches on hats. Um, the settings that you're gonna need, the hats that you're gonna need, and the material that you'll need, and also some of the equipment. Uh, this is gonna be for a person that does not have a heat press or a hat press, um, and what you can use instead of that. All right, so let's get into it. Today's material will come from createwith614.com. Um, go check them out. They've got all kinds of laser goods over there. And also, if you'll use this promo code, it'll save you 15%. Check in the uh, descriptions down below. Um, it'll have the websites for the uh, machine that I'm using and for the materials. Things you're going to need today be a lint roller, a heat gun, a piece of leatherette if you're uh, if you choose to do your own cutouts and a blank hat and also too this is going to be for applications if you want to if you choose to do the regular style patches that you can just buy in bulk they'll look kind of like this they'll be in circles and other uh, other shapes as well so when you're getting your material uh, if it's a patch like this um, you'll see the backing on this and what that is is um, most of the time it's going to have this sticky adhesive that you've got to heat up to a certain temperature. Typically it's 285 degrees and then you press it for about 10 seconds. Um, also too, if you buy in sheets like this, um, it will have the same sort of adhesive on the back of it. And this is more for like you're doing your cutouts and different designs. As you can see, I've already done some cutouts on this um, with, uh, with this material. Uh, just remember when you're ordering um, that you can get these sheets that are plain. They don't have anything on the back of it, and you'd have to put your own adhesive on the back of them. So um, just be mindful when you do order um, from the uh, website and stuff um, that it does either has the adhesive that you need or uh, if you want to put your own adhesive on the back of it. But most of the time, the patches, um, they already have the adhesive on, on the back of them for you. All right, so once you pick your image that you want, and you go ahead and clean it up and do all the editing that you need to do um, and then scale it. Um, we've already got our scale to the size that we want to have it cut out um, and engraved. So the engraving settings for this, for most of my um, leatherette and patches, this is the setting that I typically run for the engraving part. It's power at 30, speed at 105, and typically sometimes I use 100 and even up to 110. Uh, depending on how deep I want the engraving uh, on the material. And then lines per centimeter, 100, and then, of course, just one pass. Then the next thing this box is for is the actual cut. So this will uh, be placed over on top of the uh, image here, but it will go around the outside edge where this black edge is and actually do the cut. So how you do this is you'll come over here to Outline. You'll highlight your image, hit Outline, and if you want it to just cut right along the edge, you'll set the setting at zero. So once we place this back over this, it will only cut out just right along the edge. Now you can make this wider and, um, you know, and have more of a border around that if you want to. But for this image, we're, we're just wanting to cut just along this black edge right here. And I'm going to pull this back off over here and show you the settings for this. Typically with the material that we're using, um, with and with the adhesive on, on the back of it to cut through it um, most of the time the settings are going to be 75 for power speed at 10 and then of course one pass sometimes you do have to do two passes on this depending on how thick the adhesive is on the back of it um, but typically in most cases one pass will get it next thing I want to mention is that when, once you do put your cut um, on your image properly line it back up you want to highlight both of them and then come over here to align and you want to align horizontal align center and vertical align center and what that does that will actually put it back in place just along the border and it'll center everything up and then once you do that and, you, and you're happy with that you want to highlight it again right click it and then you want to group this together and so what that will do is now you can't take the the two um, uh, engraving and the cut apart they're actually sort of kind of welded together so what the machine will do next it was actually once you place it on the material 
and you get it lined up, um, it will engrave first and then cut second. Once you get your settings um, completed, you always want to come over and hit auto measure. Measure it several times, make sure that it's consistent um, before you process it. So once you get that down and it's the thickness that, um, that it's showing that, and it's being consistent. In this situation, it was uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.049. So it kept going back and forth. So that was very consistent. Um, and then once I got it aligned on my piece of material here and I was happy with it, then I'm ready to come over here to process. And then of course, we always want to frame this out. So estimated time for this is nine minutes. Um, I've already framed it out. I'm happy where it's placed on the material, uh, ready for the cut and the engrave. Um, and then I will basically hit start. Okay, the cut and engraving is complete. As you can see, it turned out to be a good clean cut on this. Um, I do tape this down. It does help a lot. Um, and then also too, I, I typically will put down tinfoil. It does help and you know keeps the marks and stuff off here. You can see where I've I had it put it on there a couple other times, but um, if you want to keep your bed from getting you know messed up, you want to put some tinfoil down, uh, shiny shiny side uh, facing down, so you want to see the dull side. Uh, typically, what works best. But overall, we had a good clean engraving and uh, and a good cut. Uh, we do have some some places to clean up here where it did you know char a little bit, but uh, overall looks pretty good. So the next part of this. Uh, we're actually going to take our hat. Um, what we have right here is actually a Richardson 112, just a blank uh, style hat. Um, it's typically a common hat that I usually use for most of my cutouts and my um, leather patches that I want to apply on here. But number one thing um, before you get started is you definitely got to clean the hat up and that's taking the stickers off. Um, and then there's actually a support backing back here um, that you just pull out, take it out as well. Um, once you get those off, you're going to take your uh, your lint roller and you're going to roll across uh, wherever you're you're going to adhere your patch or your cutout um, on the hat. So the next thing um, to make it a little bit easier on you on these hats, the six panel hats, typically it has this ridge that runs down the center of this and this um, this stitching line. So that's going to be the center of your hat. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is find the center of your patch or your cutout and figure out you know, if this is where you're gonna place it at, if you're gonna place it off to the left or to the right. But in this situation, we're actually gonna place it in the center. So I already know that this stitch line is my center of my hat, and then find the center of this, and then that's where we'll place it on the hat. At the beginning of the video, I told you that uh, this is gonna be one of the tools that you're gonna use. What this is is a heat gun, and this is gonna be a replacement of an actual heat press. So a lot, I know a lot of people don't have heat presses. Um, it does make it easier, because you can set the settings. Um, you know, put your hat on there, press it, and then you're done. But if you don't have a heat press, I'm going to show you how to use this um, instead of one. All right, so once you get your patch um, and you're ready to actually heat it up and get ready to put it on your hat, um, you'll take the backing off. And if you look real close at this, you can kind of see how it's shiny. Um, that is the adhesive on this. Um, so what we have here is a hot plate of some sort. You can use a piece of tile or find an actual hot plate. Um, it works good, so when you're putting your material on there or you cut out your leather patch, um, you're going to take your heat gun. And what I typically do is, I it, this has two different settings on it. You have a high setting, you have a low setting. I always use my low setting um, because if you do use a, um, a temperature gauge, um, these things get up to anywhere from 800 to 1200 degrees, which is plenty hot enough um, to, um, to melt the adhesive and get it ready to apply onto the hat. But I'm going to show you. So when you get ready to heat up your material, what you're looking for is the adhesive to almost turn shinier than what you see on the backing of this. It's almost going to turn into a liquid, but a good indicator that you know you've, you're getting it hot enough is once the, the edges start kind of curling up on you, then you know that the uh, material is hot enough and it's ready to apply. That's the best way to do this. You can heat it up and hit it with a laser uh, gauge and make sure that you're getting that 285. Um, but typically what's been working well for me in this situation is once I heat it up and it, the edges start curling, um, that it's ready to apply onto the hat. So, um, I'm gonna, right, so we're gonna start heating the patch up and we're just gonna put it on low setting. And typically wanna do this type of motion right here. Just take your time with it. 
And as you start doing this, you will see the adhesive start changing colors a little bit. It'll start getting a little darker. Um, and you'll also see what I'm talking about, how they, you start seeing this edge is starting to curl up. So we're getting pretty close. Just kind of go back and forth. And you don't want it to curl up too much. So right there is about where you want it. And you'll take it over. We already know where center's at. And then we'll place it on our hat, like so. And you'll get it pretty close. And then what you want to do is you want to take, you know, your palm and firmly pressing it. And it will be hot. You know, you can use gloves for this. Uh, but typically this first press is not really, really hot. It's just to set the, uh, the patch to it. It's basically what you're doing is you're just kind of setting it to it to get it to it here. And then we'll come back and we'll actually heat it up even more. All right, so before I heat this back up again, there's a second process to this. So this is not, it's not complete. It's, it's, it is stuck on there, but it's not permanent right now. So we still have to heat this up some more. Um, and what we'll do is we'll take the heat gun, we'll put it on a low setting and I'll go around the edge first and then I'll keep working my way to the center. This is where you've got to be careful um, because you can burn the material, you can warp the hat. There's a lot of things you can do. So this takes some practice. And the best way that I found to do this is just do low, uh, run it on your uh, low setting, get it warm. Um, and if you hold your hands back here while you're, you're heating it up and with your fingertips, you'll feel the heat come through there. And typically once I feel the heat coming through there and it's not burning my fingers, you don't want it to burn your fingers because that it, it's too much. It's gonna be too much heat. It's actually gonna warp the hat. Uh, so what you're, you're looking for is it just to warm the, your fingertips up, then you'll put your heat gun down and then you'll start pressing again at that point. And you'll keep doing that. So once you get your corners checked and it looks like that it's adhered to it really well, um, you can put a, uh, even a third pass along this and heat that up again. Uh, but I am going to demonstrate how I do this um, and basically show you the process of the second heat up. So, it's actually cooled down a pretty good bit, so it's going to take a little bit to heat it up uh, on the second run. But what you're going to do is take uh, you take your heat gun, put it on low setting, and you're just going to slowly go around the patch. I can feel it warming up, but it's not hot. You just want to be very consistent all the way around it. Of course, with smaller patches, um, it's going to take less time. As of right now, I can feel it starting to get in the warmest, but it's not burning my fingers. Sometimes you want to wear some gloves with this. It does help out. And this will make the hat a little bit more spongy and easier to, you know, to press in or, or to warp. So you got to be careful. You got to use, you know, this hand to kind of support where you're going to be pressing at, and just evenly go over the whole hat. And then what we'll do next is we'll come around and we'll look at our edges. And look you know just make sure that it is adhered and we'll let this cool down a little bit and uh, we'll come back and I'll actually we'll try to pick some of the sides on this I won't really pick it real hard but what I'm looking for is to make sure that the adhesive on the back is actually bonded to the hat material all right we've checked your hat um, I went around the edges I actually pulled on it a little bit and it's actually adhered on there uh, like I want it um, so things to remember when you're doing this uh, low settings take your time um, until you get used to this process. Um, you don't want to use a whole lot of heat at first uh, because you can warp the hat. You can, uh, even when you're heating up the, uh, the patch, you don't want to warp the patch or burn through it, through it as well. So what you're looking for, especially on, on the patch, is that the edges start curling up. Once they start doing that, you're, at, you're pretty much at temperature to adhere it to the hat. That's not permanent. So you gotta come back in with your second uh, heat or even a third heat and make sure that you evenly press that uh, around 
um, the patch um, to the hat and use you know your other hand to support that as you're pressing that onto the hat. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, this is a um, you know, in case you don't have a heat press, this is not uh, a certain option that you have to use. Uh, if you do have a heat press, it probably will be easier. Or even if you uh, have a Cricut uh, heat press, this is another option for you if you have one of those. Um, but things to remember, you know, you want to try to reach that temperature about 285 because that's really what uh, bonds this to the material and then press it for about 10 seconds. So. Um, like I said, I hope this video was helpful for you all. Um, if you can, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.